In today's video, I'm going to show you a free method to practice UI design by focusing on the best design principles and without getting caught up in all the flashy and practical examples shared online. <laughs> and the best part is anyone can do it. So grab your favorite drink and let's dive into the world of UI design where form meets function. To start our UI design practice, we'll need a design tool like Adobe XD or Figma, an internet connection in any mobile phone. We are going to look for popular apps and use Figma to replicate their designs, analyze them and learn from them. So the question is, how are we going to do that? To be really good at UI design, it's super important to draw inspiration from the work of real designers that are producing real designs at a commercial level. And what do I mean by that? The first site that designers go to to practice their design skills and copy other designers is Dribbble. And to be honest, it's not the best choice. I don't want to hate on Dribbble as I really like it and it's been one of my biggest lead generating tools in the past, but it does have a pretty bad rep amongst most designers and it's uh, for a pretty good reason. The problem with sites like Dribbble is that they are very often curating flashy and impractical designs with poor UX and UI that doesn't make much sense, especially in terms of layout, scale and hierarchy. And what's worse is that these designs get a lot of attention from other beginner designers that don't understand yet what a good design should look like. And this starts a cycle of bad inspiration that can set very unrealistic expectations for beginners starting out. And Dribbble is a great place if you know exactly what you're looking for, but if you're just starting out and looking for great examples, there's a much safer and simpler way to approach this. We are going to start by researching and making a list of popular apps known for their perfect UX and really good UI, which means that we'll be looking for apps that have won design awards, received positive reviews from users, or have been recommended by other designers. And you can easily find these apps by browsing app stores or searching for best designed apps online, or even looking at the apps you are already using in your phone. And if you want to go the fully free way, you should download a few of these apps to your phone and start exploring their interfaces and paying attention to the design elements, interactions and overall user experience. You should see how you feel about using them and be mindful of what you're clicking to get to the next steps because some apps are so intuitive that you don't even think when you're using them. And here's the important part. Take screenshots as you move through the app flows. Take screenshots of the main pages like onboarding, login, menus, settings, dashboards and all sorts of UI elements that stand out to you. You should focus on aspects like layout, color schemes, typography and visual. And these screenshots will serve as a great reference when you finally start working on your own designs later on. And once you have a fair share of these screenshots loaded up in your phone, so it starts to look like a proper designer's phone, it's time to upload them all to Figma. All right, so let me show you how I would do it. Okay, so I went ahead and airdropped all my screenshots into my MacBook and now I'll just drag them out from my downloads page and drop them into a new Figma file. Now, before I start naming them, here's one more thing that we should do. Our screenshots will be exported at three times the default Figma resolution. Um, so what we need to do right now is we need to simply select them all, make sure that this constraint proportions icon is selected and just divide it by three. And now let's find, let's click F on our keyboard and find an iPhone 14 or 13 mini uh, frame. So let's select this and this will be our reference frame. And what we need to do right now is we need to uh, copy this frame and place it next to our next to our screenshots and just select all of your screenshots and resize them just so they fit the new 13 mini frame. Let's place them next to our device frame and I'll explain to you in a second why we did what we just did. And the reason is because we need to make sure that all the elements fit onto the smaller frame first before we scale them up because it's always easier to scale the designs up than just uh, scale them down. And that's also the resolution that you'll be designing for uh, when you're doing commercial projects for your clients or uh, when you're working in a team with other designers and developers. Now that we have these frames, um, let's also place our screenshots into the frames. So what I'm gonna do now um, to group them into frames is, is click Option Command plus G and this way 
uh, we'll just wrap them into, into a nice uh, frame group. So let's do it for all of our screens. And let's name them now. So this is a filters page. So we, let me just zoom in a little bit and call it filters. And this we can also call filters, uh, but we could call it, let's say, practice because we'll be replicating the designs on the left using the designs on the left as a reference and we'll be replicating them on our right frame. So this will, this will be our um, explore page. And just so it's easier, maybe we'll just call it P and then explore, P for practice. Uh, this will be, let's, let's call it a part page. And similar as we did Previously, let's call it P apartment page. Uh, these will be reviews. P and reviews. And that will be apartment page. Apartment page two. And let's call it P apartment page two. And lastly, uh, let's call it a checkout page. P checkout page. Okay, so we have our screens and we have our uh, frames to practice on. Depending on your experience and how comfortable you are feeling with designing in Figma, uh, you can approach this practice in two ways. So the first way would be to trace the designs. In order to trace the designs, we need to select the image on the reference frame, click Command plus C, select the uh, frame that you want to practice on and then click Command plus V. And uh, now just uh, reduce the opacity to a level, let's say, uh, for, I mean, 40% or 30%, maybe even 50%, and then lock the layer either by clicking on this lock icon on clicking uh, Shift Command plus L. And this way, um, let's uh, just zoom in a little bit. You'll be able to just use regular tools like the text tool by clicking T, uh, so let me just change the fill to dark and the reason why we're leaving, leaving this frame on the left as a reference is because uh, we can now pick colors from this frame much easier. So uh, let's do it like that and try to match, match the size of the text that you see on the left on the screen that you're trying to trace and it will be also um, beneficial for you if you knew what kind of fonts the actual app is using. So maybe we could try to look it up, Airbnb app font. So they have their own uh, font, which is called Airbnb Serial. I don't know if it's free to use, probably not, but uh, we can try to download it and just use it as a practice for this uh, specific design. Okay, so I'll just quickly install these fonts and then we'll see if we can match the original design. I'll probably have to uh, refresh my Figma just so it can read my fonts. So let me just click refresh and let's see if our font has updated. Okay, let's look it up. Airbnb Serial. It seems to be, yep the exact font that we have used here. Uh, and then now we can try to find the exact values that they are using. And that seems to be about right. So 16 pixels of, um, of size and 0 0.1 of letter spacing. To go down and then um, replicate everything that I see on the screen. 725. And that's probably for size 14 with zero pixels on. Okay, so that's probably minus zero three, even zero four. Yep, that um, looks right. And let's pick the color from, from the left. And here's what I would do for everything that I see on the screen. Uh, to make it easier for myself, I can also open rulers and to open rulers, you have to click Shift plus R and then just drag either from 
up or from the left and then try to align your elements nicely. And apart from drawing rulers to help you place the elements onto the frame, you can also create a layout grid. So let's do it right now. Uh, we'll create a column grid consisting of four columns and maybe with a blue color just so we can see the grid very clearly. And uh, let's set the margins to 20 because that's what we calculated by looking at the design. And let's play around with the gutter. And gutter is probably around 14 pixels. Uh, we can just look at this middle uh, divider here just to find the perfect placement for a gutter and it seems to be around 14 pixels. So this will be our layout grid we can use for a for an easier reference. And the thing uh, right now to look at would be to try and space out your elements on a 8 pixel grid or whatever grid the like specific app is using. So we would uh, just try to complete or like finish the uh, the remaining elements like interface elements on these screens so this will probably be 14 maybe 0 0.5 and i think we're missing one weight of this font so let's uh, leave, leave it at that um we can so create a line here or maybe we'll just use a pen tool um, let's click one more time and uh, we would go finish creating the rest of the designs. So we now know for sure that they're using an eight pixel uh, grid because every because the distance between each element is a multiple of eight. And like you will see that the placement is not ideal every time, but we'll just try to make it as close to the reference as possible. And we can also draw our dividers here, pick the color from the one on the left, and copy it a couple more times. When you're a beginner, you should just do it like this, just uh, trace the design one by one. Don't think much about how to space them, just try to replicate them as close as possible. You might also find some issues with the design, like uh, in this example, the button is going outside of the, well, pretty much the bounding box that Airbnb is using for their uh, entire designs. So that's probably a miscalculation from their part. This button is extending about six pixels to the right. And um, once you've, let's say, finished replicating this design, you can now turn the visibility of this layer, the reference layer off. You can uh, remove the layer grid by clicking Ctrl and G and see how your designs are looking uh, like right now. So we didn't, um, we didn't actually finish creating uh, the rest of the design, but we can already see that it's uh, starting to take shape. Replicating a design like this will probably take you around 10 minutes, but once you're finished, like I said, just try to, to analyze these designs because it will be much easier for you to design later on when you're ready to create your own apps and websites. And as you recreate these UI elements, um, you should try to understand the reasoning behind every design decision made here um, and consider how each element contributes to the overall user experience and the aesthetics of the app. This will help you make informed decisions when you're designing on your own and help you memorize different design patterns much easier. And then you'll be able to think about the different design solutions on the spot because you've just recreated, let's say, 100 different screens from different industries. And once you've recreated the app screens, you now have a lot of user interface elements that you can use to experiment with your own designs. You can add your own twist. You can play with colors, the font, the layouts, and see how these changes impact the overall design. And once you've recreated a number of these app screens, you, you now have multiple user interface elements that you can use to experiment with, add your own design twists, play with colors, fonts, and layouts, and see how these changes impact the overall design. And this exercise will help you develop your unique style. And after you've traced or replicated around 50 different screens from different industries, you learn how to adapt 
designs the various contacts. The more designs you replicate, the easier it will be for you to design and you'll get to enjoy the best that UI design has to offer because all the important design decisions have been made for you and you can now learn from designs that other businesses have spent millions of dollars on before releasing them to the market. And if you want to save some time on screen screenshotting and organizing your screenshots into different categories and naming them, uh, you can head out to mobbin.com, uh, which is a paid site or a site that, like pageflows.com and use their search engine to find the apps you'd like to replicate. And like I said, Mobbin is a paid tool, uh, but it's very well wor worth the price, uh, while Pageflow is completely free to use. So depending on your budget, just uh, try to find the best site for your needs. Also, if you'd like to see how I created an entire mobile app from start to finish, uh, feel free to check out my design manual ebook. You can find the link in the description of this video. Uh, this ebook comes with a 64 page free sample. Uh, so download it before you decide it's a good fit. And uh, yeah, feel free to check it out. Okay, that's a wrap. And uh, now you know how to practice UI design by yourself. And most importantly, for free, but we're not done yet. In the follow-up video, we'll discuss how to take your practice up a notch and build a pretty impressive portfolio as a beginner designer, even if you don't have any commercial projects to show just yet. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on the follow-up video. So stay curious, guys, stay creative and get ready to make a name for yourself in the UI design world. I'll see you in the next one.